Alright, in this video my goal is for you guys to be able to understand fractional distance and how you can calculate fractional distance when you're looking at a number line or a coordinate plane. The pictures that I have set up for you right now is just to give you an understanding of how we can utilize fractional distance in the real world. So let's say that I'm describing the location of um, of this bus stop, okay? So what I could tell you is that the bus stop is half of the distance from the hospital to the home. So for example, if this is my full distance, I'm going from the hospital all the way to the home, and I tell you, well, my bus stop is half of the distance between the two. That makes sense because it looks like it's about halfway across that full length. Now let's say, for example, that my bus was located more over here. So then what I could say is that my bus stop is maybe three-fourths of the distance from the hospital to my house. So that's another way that you could um, describe fractional distance is by looking at the location of things. Now let's look at an example where calculating fractional distance on a number line. So here I have this number line and we have points A and B and I want to place letter Y such that it's going to be two-thirds of the distance from B to A, and then I want to place Z such that it's one-fifth of the distance from A to B. So one of the first things that I want to do is count the full distance that I'm going. So from A to B, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 units. So for point Y... I want to go two-thirds of that distance, so I'm going to multiply that by 12, since that's my full distance. So when you're multiplying fractions, you want to multiply the numerator times the numerator, denominator times denominator, so I know I can put 12 as a fraction by putting a 1 in the denominator. So this is 24 divided by 3, 24 divided by 3 will be 8 units. So Y is 8 units from B to A. So I want to make sure that when I start counting, I want to go that distance starting at point B. So from point B, I'm going to count 8 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So then my location of y would be at negative 3. Now for z, z is one-fifth of the distance. So I'm going to go through the same process of multiplying my total distance by that fractional distance one-fifth. So I'm going to multiply the numerators times the numerators, denominators times the, the, the denominators. So 12 divided by 5. Instead of leaving it like this, I'm going to go ahead and do that division. So 5 goes into 12 two times. I'm going to add a decimal, bring down my 0. 5 goes into 20 four times. So that's 2.4 of a distance. And this time I'm going from A to B. So I'm going to go one, two, and then point four wouldn't be quite halfway across. It'd be about right there. So that's where I would put the location of Z. Now, if I wanted to give you the actual um, numerical value of where that's at, what I would do is I would subtract seven minus 2.4. So let me do that right here. Seven minus the 2.4.
and that's going to put it at negative 4.6. And that makes sense when I'm looking at my number line and where I put the letter Z. Now let's look at how we can calculate directional distance when I have a coordinate plane. So in this example it says the graph below shows the line segment AB where A is located at negative 8, negative 2, and B is located at 1, 13. What is the location of point K if it is one-third of the distance from A to B? What I want to do is look at my horizontal distance and my vertical distance between these two points. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating a triangle that is going to connect points A and B. My vertical distance is going to be focusing in on my y coordinates. So I'm looking at the distance from the negative 2 to the positive 13. So what I would do is I would take the difference of those two numbers and I'm going to calculate this with the absolute value because distance is always going to be a positive number. So my vertical distance is 15. And let me um, just, I'm going to do this color coded just so that we know difference between vertical distance and horizontal distance. Horizontal distance would be that bottom part right there. So for my horizontal distance, I'm focusing on my x coordinates. So I'm looking at the change in values from negative 8 to a positive 1. So negative 8 minus 1 is going to be the absolute value of negative 9, which is giving me a positive 9. So what I want to do now that I know the, the distances is I'm going to calculate one-third of those distance because it's telling me that point K is a third of the distance from A to B. So I'm going to multiply both of these numbers by one-third. Nine times one-third is three, and 15 times one-third is five. So what that means is, in order to find the location of point K, I would need to go three units to the right, and then five units from point A. So let's focus on the where po point A is currently located. So that's at negative 8, negative 2. Now if I want to go 3 units to the right, that means I'm going to add 3 to my x coordinate. And then if I'm going 5 units up, I'm going to add 5 to my y coordinate. It's important to realize here that it depends on which point we're coming from. Because when you move, if you think about your x and y axis, if I'm moving up, that's in the positive direction. If I'm moving down, that's in the negative direction. If I move left, that's in the negative direction. And if I move right, that's in the positive direction. So you really want to take that into consideration before you are calculating the new location. So for point K, I'm going to add 3 to negative 8. So that's going to give me a negative 5. And then I'm going to add 5 to the negative 2. It's going to give me a positive 3. So K, which is a third of the distance from A to B, would then have to be located at negative 5, comma, 3. So Right here, if I look back at my picture, K right here is at negative 5, 3. And I want to verify to make sure that that number is reasonable. And if when I look at my picture, it needs to be a number that lands on my line segment. And this one does. When I look at that negative 5, positive 3, it does make sense that it would be located about right there on my picture. So, I hope that was helpful, guys.